In early June of 2023, the Big Ten releases their 2024 and 2025 Big Ten conference schedules and also talks about their plans for how they will schedule in the future using their Flex Protect model. And that was all well and good, and the schedules were balanced, and I appreciated how the Big Ten Conference went about scheduling for the 2024 and 2025 college football season. But then, the Pac-12 is really cratering from within, and there's rumors that Colorado and Arizona are looking to join the Big 12. There have been rumors that Oregon was looking to join the Big Ten or the Big 12, and Washington, similar for much of the 2023 preseason as well. Well, the Pac-12 conference, because of George Kalaikov's and the previous commissioner's ineptitude, finally cracked under pressure, and Oregon and Washington wanted out, and they wanted to join the Big Ten, starting in 2024. And the Big Ten wisely invited them to the table, and now they will have a seat at the table, starting in 2024. So, the initial 2024 and 2025 schedules had to be scrapped to make room for the Huskies and the Ducks, and those schedules were released today. Welcome back, fellow football fanatics. It's your host, College Football with Sam, and I have a lot to say about the 2024, 2025, and even 26, 27, and 28 Big Ten football schedules that were released today. So, I'm going to be doing a live stream, per usual on Thursdays at 7 p.m., but I'm going to be doing a live stream tonight, which is a Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, to discuss these schedules and go over them in greater detail than I will in this video. So make sure to hit the notification bell if you're interested in hearing my more detailed thoughts and analysis on these schedules, and please hit the big red subscribe button. Click the notification bell, not just so that you can listen to my live tonight at 7, but also so that you can get notified when I release future Big Ten football and college football in general content. Also, make sure to check out my Patreon page via the link in the description so that you can be thanked at the end of the video and so that you can also get insider access to my potential power rankings, and game predictions, and picks against the spread and the money line, which also use potential power. And potential power has been very successful over the past two weeks. So I encourage you to check out my Patreon, but more so comment your thoughts on the scheduling down below. Most importantly, I want to hear your thoughts on this whole ordeal. I did not expect the Big Ten to plan all the way out to 2028. I don't know why I didn't, but it kind of shocked me. I was thinking that the Big Ten would do the 2024, 2025, maybe 26, 27 schedules. But I think in retrospect, what this tells us, or at least tells me, is that the Big Ten in about June... May, April, when they were building this schedule, had an inclination and definitely had insider information that they were likely going to be adding teams in the 2023 preseason or 2024 preseason. That's why they only scheduled it out two years in advance, because before the Big Ten added USC and UCLA and decided to do away with divisions in 2024, the Big Ten had schedules planned out like to the mid-2020s using the East and West Division format. I think that in adding USC and UCLA, the Big Ten thought that they, there would be more members of the Pac-12 or perhaps non-Pac-12 members that would be interested in joining shortly after the Trojans and the Bruins did. And indeed, that's what happened with Oregon and Washington joining. And I think that these schedules, just in summary, looking at all of them, but especially 2024, because beyond 2024, the rosters will be so different, potentially the coaching staffs will be so different that these teams could be playing at a totally superior or inferior level than they are right now. And that speaks to any team. Um, we never know what's going to happen in the future. So 
just I think looking at 2024 especially is important. They're pretty balanced, the schedules are. I mean, there are some teams that, from my perspective, have easier schedules and harder schedules, but we don't know for sure if those are going to remain the case or not. Rutgers, for example, they don't play Michigan, Ohio State, or Penn State. Their toughest game will probably be an away game at USC, and their three other away games are at Maryland, at Michigan State, and at Nebraska. And their toughest home game will probably be against Washington. And their other home games are at Wisconsin, UCLA, Minnesota, and Illinois. On paper, that looks like a very easy schedule, especially when you consider that almost any other team on this schedule faces at least Penn State, Ohio State, and Michigan, who likely will be the big three next year. USC's great. Oregon, Washington are great. I think they're better than USC right now, but they will be entering a new environment, and there will be a lot of unfamiliarity with these Pac-12 teams, at least initially. But nonetheless, Rutgers still has to travel on the road, for example, to play USC, and they have to host Washington and host Wisconsin, so there are challenges for a schedule that on the surface looks like one of the easier schedules in the Big Ten, it's still one of the tougher schedules nationally, I would argue. And then you have Michigan, for example. Michigan plays an away game at Washington, an away game at Ohio State, and then they have their easier away games at Indiana and Illinois. They host Oregon, they host USC, they host Minnesota, Northwestern, Michigan State. I think that's one of the toughest schedules that Michigan has had in recent memory. For big, for big Ten Conference specifically, and the Wolverines will likely be hosting Texas as well that year. That could be one of the nation's toughest schedules. Michigan could ironically go from playing a collective of nobodies for half of the season to be playing a somebody every week. It's incredible. And for there's other schools as well, like Illinois. They have to play away games at Penn State, Oregon, they host Michigan, Minnesota, Purdue, Michigan State, and they have other away games at Rutgers, Northwestern, and Nebraska. Iowa, they have to play away games at UCLA, Ohio State, Minnesota, Michigan State, and Maryland, and they host Washington, Wisconsin, Northwestern, Nebraska. There are going to be so many intriguing matchups. There's such a diversity of opponents, of schemes. I think it's going to be incredible. There's going to be a ton of of great football games, and I think potentially starting next year, the Big Ten out of the gate could be the best conference in college football. I think long term, if everything holds constant, which likely won't be the case, but I think we'll have a little bit of a breath of fresh air from conference realignment for a few years, and then at the end or maybe middle to end of 2020s, we'll see it pop up again. But who knows? I'm Far from an insider, and I don't know any of the Pac-12 commissioners or, you know, college football commissioners. I don't know why I said Pac-12 commissioners. The Pac-12 commissioner won't exist in approximately less than a year, like six months, gone, um, dead. That conference has been dead for months now. But anyway, I just think the Pac-12 was on my mind because four Pac-12 teams the Pac-12's four best teams, in fact, in terms of total value, and I'd say history and branding, are joining the Big Ten. But again, I don't know any athletic directors or commissioners personally. This is just kind of what I'm anticipating with my mind and what my intuition tells me. The future Big Ten currently is six teams in the top ten of the AP poll. That's nuts. Um, And those teams, by the way, are... USC, Oregon, Washington, Penn State, Ohio State, and Michigan. And I typically don't talk about potential power. I have been recently because it's very successful at predicting games. For now, I question whether the success is sustainable or not. And it's basically Patreon-exclusive content. But I'll give you a hint of some of the rankings because I am going to post a video about it on Patreon talking about the rankings and what they mean. 
there are a plethora of Big Ten teams right now, future Big Ten teams as well, who are in the top 25 of potential power. Michigan, Ohio State, Washington, Oregon, go all the way down to Penn State, Wisconsin, USC, Maryland, and that's it. Eight teams, eight teams who in the future will be in the Big Ten starting in 2024 are in the top 25 of potential power. Only six are in the actual AP top 25, but all of them are in the top 10 again. And UCLA, Minnesota, Iowa, Rutgers, and they're they're close to the top 25 of potential power, which only measures power five opponents, but they're close. So the Big Ten in the future, I think, will be the deepest conference in all of college football. A large part of that, of course, is they have 18 teams. Well, let's say the SEC has 16. You have more teams that helps you have a deeper conference. If the SEC expanded to 18 teams and added Clemson and Florida State, well, immediately we're back to the discussion of whether the East, the SEC is the deepest conference in all of college football. But right now, there's been no news about the SEC adding anyone else besides Texas and Oklahoma, who look to be the best in the Big 12 this year. So those are the two best conferences in college football right now and moving forward, obviously. Um, but these additions are very critical to the future success of the Big 10. And I think with these schedules, the biggest takeaway that I can provide initially without, you know, deep diving and taking around an hour in my live stream, which might be longer than an hour tonight, to talk about these schedules in depth, it's going to be challenging for anyone to go 12 and out in these schedules. You look at Michigan, for example. Michigan is away games against Ohio State and Washington. They host rival Michigan State and Oregon and USC. And Minnesota at home and Illinois on the road are teams who I could see enter the top 25. They have enough of a good culture, enough great trench play and a Big Ten identity, and enough skill players to do something. Is Michigan especially losing the amount of production they're going to lose from this season, which will be insane, the amount of production drop-off that will occur, returning production at least, will Michigan go 12-0 and with that schedule, or is it likely? The answer is no. Even if Michigan returns everyone they can return, the answer to that question is likely no. For Ohio State, they have a road game against Penn State, who is probably going to come close to leading the Big Ten and returning production next year. They have an away game at Oregon and an away game against Michigan State, who likely will improve just off of hiring a better head coach compared to Mel Tucker. And Ohio State has home games against Michigan, Iowa, Nebraska. And maybe Purdue can be a competent team as well. I'm not mentioning, you know, Indiana for Michigan or Ohio State or even Northwestern for both of those teams as well, as I expect those programs to be bad next year. But maybe they could do something as well even. Is Ohio State likely to go 12-0 and with that schedule? Well, given the talent they have every year, talent and depth will probably become more important now than ever with how hard the schedules are. But I'd even say for Ohio State, the likelihood they're going 12-0. Not high. I mean, Oregon, that's a loud environment. That's a different climate. And there's going to be jet lag. And Oregon Stadium is going to be full of anger and noise. And they're recruiting at a high level as well. And they have a great NIL program. So Oregon's future is great. Penn State and Rutgers. I mentioned how they have, I think, some of the easier schedules in the Big Ten. Penn State doesn't play Michigan. They host Ohio State, and even though they have USC on the road, with the amount of production they return, I think Penn State is going to be one of the best teams in the Big Ten and, and in the country next season. They're going to be much better than they are this year. Are they likely to go 12-0 and playing USC and Wisconsin and Minnesota and Purdue on the road, and also hosting Ohio State, UCLA, Washington, Maryland, and Illinois? No. Um, it's very difficult for me at this moment to forecast anyone to go 12-0 and with the, the schedules that they have. The schedules are extremely balanced. I mean, I think Michigan and Oregon, for example, have harsh schedules. 
Oregon has to play on the road at Michigan. They have to host Ohio State. And then some other competent teams they play on the road are UCLA, Wisconsin, maybe Purdue. And they host Maryland, Illinois, Michigan State, and also Washington, a rival of theirs. Those programs, Michigan and Oregon, I think have harsh schedules. But the spectrum of strength of schedule seems to be very balanced. There isn't this wide variety of, let's say, Ohio State this year only having, I think, six home games off the top of my head. And they play Notre Dame, Wisconsin, and Michigan on the road, and they host Penn State. That's a very tough schedule, as is. And there's Michigan, who plays Bowling Green, UNLV, East Carolina. Um, Nebraska and Minnesota are worse than expected in the preseason, at least for now. Rutgers, Purdue, Indiana, those are all home games. Michigan State's horrible. Maryland, Penn State, and... Ohio State might be Michigan's three toughest games all at the end of the season, and Michigan right now, by efficiency and many other metrics, is much better than Maryland. They're significantly better than Penn State, and they've beaten Ohio State two times over the past two years, and they look better than them according to metrics as well. So you're not going to have that gap in scheduling where you'll be able to look at your neighbor, your fan base neighbor, and say, hey, you have an effortless schedule, I have the entire world against me. These schedules are very balanced. Like Penn State and Rutgers, I think, have easier schedules compared to the average and compared to Michigan and Oregon's, but they still present challenges. Penn State going into USC, that's a very tough game to win. Rutgers still has USC on the road and Washington and Wisconsin at home. And Rutgers, relative to how good they've been over the past few seasons, traveling to Nebraska, Michigan State, and Maryland is going to be a challenge. And then there's schools like Northwestern, where they have Iowa, Maryland, Michigan, Purdue, and Washington on the road, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio State, and Wisconsin at home. It's a very tough schedule. USC on the road has Maryland, Michigan, Minnesota, UCLA, and Washington. And at home, they play Wisconsin, Rutgers, Penn State, Nebraska. For USC, Oregon, UCLA, and Washington, there's going to be a lot of travel time. And that, depending on how the games are scheduled, because we know the away games, we know the home games, but we don't know the dates and times. Depending on how the dates and times of these games are assembled and where the bye weeks are placed, which is going to be ever more important with the conference being across the lower 48 instead of just in the Midwest, that could take a toll on especially these Pac-12 teams. Um, Big Ten teams, traditional, maybe, because traveling to Oregon and to UCLA in back-to-back weeks would suck, but not as much as those former Pac-12 schools because there's a large cluster of Midwest schools and then kind of the outlier four along the West Coast. But the schedules, I think, are very balanced, and I think the Big Ten right now is a step ahead of the SEC in terms of the sheer amount of competition. Michigan, Penn State, Ohio State, I expect, based off of the fact that they won't have to make new adjustments as much as the four Pac-12 teams former, I expect Michigan, Penn State, and Ohio State to still be the big three next year. But USC, Washington, Oregon, and perhaps even UCLA could compete for all four of those former Pac-12 teams could compete for the top of the conference or the top quarter or fifth or third of the conference very easily. And then Big Ten teams in Nebraska are recruiting well. I think Nebraska is only going to go up from here. For Wisconsin, I think it's a similar story. Maryland's on an upward trajectory. Rutgers is on an upward trajectory. Purdue has a nice recruiting class. Michigan State is in a precarious position where they could become Indiana, But Michigan State also has the donor base and the money to um, just, you know, get out a Cuban cigar and smoke away and hire Urban Meyer, and they're back in the conversation. I mean, this conference is so deep, and I didn't even mention Illinois with Brett Bielema. And Northwestern, who knows? Maybe Northwestern's that team who never wins the conference again, but just hangs around and they can play some entertaining football. And... Iowa, I, I I guess Iowa and probably Indiana, in my mind, have the worst futures of any Big Ten team, but Iowa just finds ways to win games. And Indiana, historically, along with Northwestern, have been the worst teams in the Big Ten. 
So I like what I see from these schedules. Again, I know I didn't go too in-depth. I didn't even talk about 2025, 26, 27, or 28, except for the fact that those schedules are balanced as well. Um, The Big Ten's rotating opponents nicely. Like Michigan, for example, in 26 and 27 will play Penn State. So matchups are going to be great every year. Very balanced schedule. A lot of parity, I think, in terms of in terms of the diversity of schedules, there's not, you know, a few teams have the toughest schedules in the world and a few Big Ten teams have it relatively easy. I think that's going to be eliminated here. I like what the Big Ten has done with 18 teams starting in 2024. They are for sure going to be a super conference. And I think they're going to be the deepest conference in all of college football. But looking at how tough the schedules are, which means there will be losses a lot of losses, and it will be hard to go 12-0. and And also the fact that Michigan and Ohio State will likely lose a lot of production, and Penn State hasn't even won the Big Ten since 2016, and they haven't reached the playoff yet. It's hard for me to say the Big Ten will be the most likely to win the national title. And I think with Texas and how they're recruiting Georgia and Alabama, as long as Smart and Saban are there, are going to be in the conversation. Georgia right now will probably still reach the playoff and go 13-0, and and Texas A&M still recruiting well. I got to think the SEC still has the edge in winning the national title, just looking at how the conferences look to operate next year and the returning production and stuff. But I'm not trying to predict 2024. I'm just trying to react to what the schedules are for the Big Ten from 24 to 28. So thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I want to give a shout-out to my Patreon supporters, Spencer Bringhurst, my All-American, and Will Loftus, Gabriel Callender, Roaming Gnome, and Matthew Sale, my All-Conference patrons. Just a quick public service announcement. If you have joined my Patreon, um, this list for shouting out Patreon supporters updates weekly. So if you're a patron right now and your name isn't featured, don't worry. After this week, the beginning of next week, your name will be featured at the end of the video. Check out my Patreon page via the link in the description. And thank you so much for watching, guys. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And most importantly, comment your thoughts down below. Have a great day, guys.